everybody, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here today with a video in conjunction with the Facebook group Art Joy is Sharing. You can find this at hashtag AJOS. I put that in the uh, caption so you can see it. All right, what I'm doing today is I'm making something with a tin that I'm going to use to store my ATCs. I decided this year not to make a book. Well, that's not true. You'll see later at the end what, what the deal is. Anyway, so I measured them to be sure that my cards would fit in them. The little one, not going to work. Look at the measurements at the top. Nope, too small. I am very disappointed. I open it up, um, and these all come with an accordion-style book, and I thought, okay, I'll use that. Nope, only 14 places. So that means I would have had to splice it and add another book to it, and it still would only have 28 things in it so I thought oh fiddlesticks not gonna do it so this tin is out I got these tins at Michael's when they were in Clarence on Clarence and I think I bought them three or four years ago and they were like 50 cents a dollar 99 a dollar so I went through the bin and bought every one of them I could find of course they still sitting in the drawer I put them in so I would remember to use them all right so the second one is large enough and there's the accordion thing and again I cannot use it because there's only 14 things on it and I wasn't gonna tear it up because the other one's smaller so they wouldn't fit together anyway it was a big disappointment let me tell you what because I had plans for that book I thought oh I'll get out of making a book no that was not gonna work so on with the larger tin. It's going to sit up on the bookshelf, and I'm trying to show you that it, it will sit on the bookshelf. It will sit on the bookshelf as long as I put a book on either side of it, because I want where the hinge is to be the spine, that what would have been the spine to a book. So it'll sit upright on a bookshelf when there's other little miniature books on either side of it to balance it out. All right, so here we go. I'm going to make an embossed tin top to the little silver tin. I'm using tinned copper. The tools I'm using is a, a stylus that comes with screw in ends and it can be that both ends are have the threads on it so you can screw the implements in. I think there were 10 implements and then the tool itself. They're from Walnut Hollow. This is a um, number, well, now it's moved on. It was a number stencil from What If NC for the year, because I'm gonna put the year on the spine. All right, there's the tinned copper. Has a very thin layer of copper on top of tin. There's a stencil that I made in design and What If NC cuts for me when I get Etsy orders. I'm gonna Turn it upside down to the tin side because I want the copper side to pop out. So I'm going to tape it down so that I can use the tools on it. Um, underneath the stencil is one layer of fun foam. And uh, one of those alpha pads that I, uh, mat that I cut down into little bitty squares or little bitty rectangles because it was basically gross but I could use it as a cushion because I have that Tim Holtz glass mat on my on my desk and I didn't want to ruin it so I put things on top of it here are the Martha Stewart stylus I've had them for so long that the logo and the name and everything have actually rubbed off they each have a ball on the end for small to a large um, space to to emboss and I you didn't probably see it but two seconds, but I used the end of a uh, paintbrush because I wanted to show you that you don't have to draw and you don't have to spend a lot of money on this either to get the desired results. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you that I use a Q-tip to do some of the embossing. So I'm just going over it, following the stencil, outlining, outlining it, and then pressing it in with a ball stylus so that the copper pot, the copper portion will pop out on the other side. All right, now I'm done. I'm peeling it off of here. 
and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to show you what the embossed side looks like. There's the tin side and there's the embossed side with the stencil. Didn't draw a stinking thing. So if you're not an artist that draws, doesn't matter. That's why we have stencils. <laughs> now I'm taking a Teflon tip that's pointed and I'm going to go around and I'm going to outline the popped up parts. And I showed you the little ball tip. You could use a little ball to outline. You just need something with a little sharp edge on it so that you can outline the stuff that's popped up. And to give it a little more definition, you outline it to make it a little more defined so it looks nicer. It looks better after you outline it than when it's plain. So I, do, I was taking the stencil over here because I wanted to make sure I got the leaves in the right shape when I went over them with the stylist. Because some of them, I don't think I got the shape all the way in the stencil. So when I flipped over the, um, the metal, I want to make sure that I get it by looking at the stencil. And I use the stencil as a guide. This part takes a little bit. And it takes a little time. Not long, but just a little bit. So I just go around the edges, the whole thing, and it'll make it look nicer once, once I finish doing all the outlining. This is one of two ways you can make the embossed portion pop out, it's by outlining or by rubbing on the flat part, which I'm about to do with the Q-tip and I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> After I started rubbing on it, I realized that I did not need the fun foam. And when I did it, it caused lines where I went over it with the Q-tip. I did go in between some of the smaller spaces with the Q-tip and mash them down so the embossed part would pop up more. All right, so I realized that I have made a mistake and I'm going back trying to fix my mistake to no avail. If I had put it flat on a glass surface like the Tim Holtz mat, it would have been completely flat, but now I've got lines in it. So I'm trying to fix it by doing it on the other side. <laughs> what is the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Ta-da! I am the star pupil for that. So here I am with the Q-tip trying again. I'm like, oh, nope, that's not going to work. So then I decide I need to cover this error up. In that little kit, there is a brass brush. So I take the brush and I squiggle it all around the outsides of the petals to the edge of the piece to cover up the fact that I had all the lines that I made with the Q-tip. See, now what I'm doing is right along dumb because I'm scratching off the copper. All right, this stuff is the um, Dimensional Magic from Mod Podge. Once you have it popped up, you want it to stay popped up. You don't want it to cave in. So you fill all the little holes where the flowers and the stem are with that Dimensional Magic. And you let it dry for a couple of hours or better yet overnight. When it's cloudy, like you see at the very top, that means it's still wet down towards the bottom where it's clear and you can barely see the leaves, that stuff is dry. Sometimes when it settles, you have to do more than one coat because it settles and it compresses down. And it depends on how deep the embossing goes. All right, so now I've taken a little squirt of acrylic paint, put it in the daisy wheel, and I gave it a little squirt of plain water and I dried it with the heat gun. Now I'm gonna try to get off the excess black because I want what's left that is settled into all the little divots and cracks and crevices to stay. But I realized that by drying it with the heat gun, it just made it hard to get to it. So I whip out the spongy sandpaper. It's a fine sandpaper. You can buy these at any 
hardware store and I'm going to buff it. Well, by buffing it, you know, I took the copper off the outside by using that brass brush. Now I'm going to finish it off by using the sanding tool. <laughs> so I took all my copper off top almost completely, almost completely done. If you leave it wet, if you want it to look, have that patina look, leave it wet and wipe it off. Don't use the heat gun. I was in a hurry. That was a mistake. So I'm going through it, trying to clean it up a little bit, trying to make the top part really shiny. Oh, yeah, it was shiny because now it's all tin. <laughs> There's no copper left. I'd already gone too far. I had to keep going. I was not going to go back and do this again. Now I'm laying it on the lid, and you will see my mistake again when I get more into the lid, the trying to fit the embossed piece onto the lid of the tin. You will see later where I made another mistake. All right, so I'm looking to make sure the width is okay. The width looks almost good. And then for the length, what I did was I just bent it over the edge. You can see the crease towards the bottom. So it would give me a guide where to cut it off. All right, I use the corner chompers because the box does not have 90 degree angle corners. It's rounded, so I use the corner chomper to get the corners more rounded. So I realize after I lay it down the opposite direction where I lay it flat on the table that there's still some that's overlaying. So I take a sharp tool not a knife, and I rake it down the side of the box, and all it did was crease it. So then I ended up having to cut it with scissors because it didn't cut it. It wasn't sharp enough to cut it, and it left jagged edges from using the scissors. I should have laid it down before I started and marked it with a Sharpie so I would know that it would fit perfectly on there. Now I'm looking at all the frayed edges and how I might get cut. And I cut some more off because it hung off just a wee bit. These are all just fine tuning adjustments. Now I'm going back over the edges to make sure I kind of grind the edges down with this little Teflon wheel to make them flat so they lay flat on the tin. They're still a little textured, so I take an acrylic nail file from Dollar Tree, rough it up. doesn't work. I think I've used all the grit off of it. Now I'm going back with that sandpaper um, sponge, spongy sandpaper thing, to dull down the edges so I don't cut myself because I have cut myself on that copper in the past working with it when I did not file down the edges to make them more smooth. All right, so it fits. I take E6000 and I glue it on there. You're not going to see that in the video. I have a little bit left. And so I'm going to uh, take that little teeny stencil with the numbers on it, and I'm stenciled the year 2022 on it. So I remember that's the year of those ATC cards. So I cut the tin and make sure it'll fit on there. And now I've got to take the um, stencil and stencil those beep, 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 teeny weeny little numbers that I can barely see because I, I tilt my light up so it doesn't glare while I'm making the video and I can't see it. I cannot see what I'm doing, but I still go forward. <laughs> I might as well have my glasses off and both my eyes closed as good as it looks when it's done. So I'm looking at the stylus to see what is small enough to fit in that little stencil, number stencil. I go over it and over it and flip it over and do it again and then I go over it again <laughs> I am nothing if not persistent there I gotta do it again I bent the stencil so I had to bend it back into place so my two looks like an S so I put it down on there and I do it again. <laughs> I have three tries with the twos. I figured I'm going to get one of them right. The odds were in my favor. Two out of three look good. You'll see. There I am fussing around with it some more. It just never ends.
and more. I'm going to try again. I am not giving up. Like a dog with a bone. <laughs> now, I move the light so I can see what I'm doing. Of course, now the tin is shiny and there's a glare. And I lay it down on where I think the number was when I tried it basically in the dark. And it turned out okay. So I rub it with the sandpaper sponge, trying to get a lot of the black off of it so you can see the numbers better. Then I go back and outline it again. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is turning into a bowl incident. And those of you who have not seen the bowl video, you have to watch the paper bowl video. Okay, there you go. Um, Two of, the, uh, two of the twos don't look too bad. One of them looks like a backwards S. So I'm going to glue that on, which will, the, the end there where the um, hinges are for the box are basically going to be the spine. It's going to sit upright on the shelf. That's why I want to put the year on there so I know where to find the year. Because I have, I think, 19, 20, 21, and this will be 22. I hate putting them in a notebook and then putting the notebook on the shelf and never looking at it. Although, this will be a nice book that sits on the shelf that I never open and look at it. Pick your battles. So I had some extra that was the textured without embossing, a lot of embossing on it where the flower was. And I decided that I didn't want to just put a little strip with a number on it. So I cut little strips, two more strips. And I added those to the box. I lay them out two or three times and putsy around with them and decide, yep, that looks good. Of course, I didn't have enough to do the whole box. So what you don't see that I cut out of the video, I went back again and cut two long strips that would go around the bottom portion of the box. So it looked cohesive. I did not do the upper portion. I just threw my hands up in the air and walked away. So I was so flustered, I thought, well, I need to stop and walk away. So I finished the video, and maybe next week or something, I'll finish the top part. It's just a matter of cutting the strip and, and piecing it around the hinges for the top portion so it looks like the bottom. Basically, I'm just too lazy to go back and do it right now. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I am not the poster child for perfection. I think of myself more as a ram with horns that keeps hitting the brick wall. One of these days that wall's gonna cave. I know it is, I just know it. Okay, so here is the final project well, not final, final, just final. Um, here it is, my tin with the embossing done on the metal and then texturized and black watered down acrylic paint. Now, let me explain this stuff in the box. These are old business cards I had from when my business was called something else and my old phone number from when we lived in Virginia. And I have hundreds of these. So instead of doing the typical size two and a half by three and a half, I just been using these business cards. So I counted 30 of them out and they fit in the box with, if I look this way, a little room to spare if I don't put too much dimension on them. And this will be how I store 2022's ATC challenge, which I kind of like. But I need to cover this up around here. I want to, I got the bottom part, which was easy. So I want to go back and do the top, but I didn't want to film all that in the video and then have it cut it all out, edit it out. So there's just no point in showing it. But it'll be the same thing. I'll cut a strip and I'll only put it in between where the two hinges are and then skip that and then go all the way around so that it looks a little more cohesive. So I basically combined two different days on the ATC list. One of them was embossed 
background, which this is. And the other one, uh, another day for ATC says metal. So I kind of killed two birds with one stone on this one, even though I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> Since when do I follow directions, right? Okay, so there's that. But I did want to talk about this. Now, I did this video first and decided I didn't want to put it as a video. This is um, a two and a half by three and a half piece of chipboard with um, computer paper that was put through an embossing folder on the cuddle bug. And then I put a bunch of colors on it because I wanted it to look like leather. And then I thought what I would do with my ATCs is I would put stuff in a book when I got finished. And that way it was already done and I didn't have to do anything extra. So I cut each one of these pieces here. There's two in a signature. I cut them three and a half tall and five inches wide. To fold it in half, they're three and a half by two and a half. Unfortunately, my great idea was to put this into the tin but I should have measured the back, not the top lid, and they don't fit. Now, I could make them fit if I went through and rounded all the corners off on these, but I, I decided I wasn't gonna do that. So it's embossed on the back and the front, and then it's got all the signatures in here, and I may do some ATC stuff at a later date in here. But that was the original plan, to put all my stuff here, then, I was asked to make a video about embossed background, and I didn't read it right, so I thought, embossed, well, I'll just do an embossed metal piece, and that'll be fine. And then someone said, you know, it's embossed background. It's like, uh-oh, I messed up. So it is an embossed background. That That's the background, right? Does that, does that count? Eh. And then I got the... Uh, two of 2022 20, uh, 20, on there. I had a good time making it. I haven't embossed stuff in a long time. But I think that's the way this will hold my stuff this time. And these things here will be safe for another year or another date or another project. But all I have to do is sew it together and it'll be finished. So, you know, sometimes when you make a mistake, you find a way to use your mistake someplace else. All right, everybody, this is all I have for today for Hashmark AJOS for the June ATC Challenge. Come and join the Facebook group. They do a lot of different kinds of things that are all very interesting. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.